it's uncompromising, addictive and often unforgiving with an adrenaline rush like no other. There is no practice, no second chances. It's the ultimate motorsport competition on gravel. It is rally and this is the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship. Round two of the series coming to you from the nation's capital. Last round in Western Australia, Molly Taylor made history, becoming the first female to win a heat of the ARC. She crashed out of the power stage, but was consistent enough in the first heat to come out on top. Steve McKenzie failed to realise the high hopes he had for his Optico Fiesta, fuel issues keeping him down the order. Simon Evans' comeback started well with the power stage win, but he had to settle for third behind Taylor and his younger brother Eli in the factory Citroen DS3. Eli Evans missed the power stage but battled on through the weekend to score enough points to secure the weekend win. The other Citroens of Sullins and Coppen both rolled out of contention in spectacular style but would regroup between rounds for Canberra. So Eli Evans leads the way into this weekend ahead of Molly Taylor. But Simon Evans is just one point behind. Steve McKenzie and Tony Sullins make up the top five in the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship. In the four-wheel drive national series, Mick Patton leads the way from Brad Markovic and Doug Tostevin. Justin Dow finished fourth ahead of Robert Webber, but remember, this series is the best three rounds of five, and Mick Patton's Repco Evo 10 and Justin Dowell are the only drivers in the top five contesting round two. Dowell and his regular co-driver, Matt Lee, will debut their brand new Hyundai i20 Proto. It's a sneak preview on just what the future of Australia's top rally will be, with a move away from production-based rally cars to specific race-built machines. Mark Petter is also back in a new car, the first of the Maxi cars. Again, a purpose-built car designed to see in the new era of rallying. For now, though, the focus is on the outright championship, and that charge is being led by Eli Evans and Glenn Weston in the Citroen DS3. Molly Taylor and Bill Hayes will be hoping to repeat their good form from WA. The high-tech oil's Renault set to put pressure on both Eli and Simon Evans, who returns with Ben Searcy in the car that took his younger brother to victory in two previous championships. Steve and Brent McKenzie will be hoping for better speed and reliability this round after the disappointment of WA. Fuel issues plagued the brothers from Victoria, and they never showed their true potential in the Optico Fiesta. Tony Sullins and Julia Barkley are back and ready for action. Despite the lack of experience in Canberra, this pairing will be one to watch in their second season in the Citroen DS3. Adrian Coppen is looking for improvement after the trials of round one. He and Erin Kelly might be a new team, but they've gelled well and made the cut for the all-important Armour All STP Power Stage for a second time. They collected one bonus point for third, with Simon Evans in his first outing in the tank former's Honda Jazz taking out second, his brother Eli in the Citroen. In four-wheel drive, Mark Pedder never made the cut, the new Maxi car's engine dropping into limp mode. I couldn't believe it, we've got no accelerator. No such problems for Justin Dowell in the new Hyundai i20, but he was pushed back to third behind Marcus Borkham. It was the Irishman, Richie Dalton, though, who flew round the 2.8-kilometre track in record time to win his first Armour All STP power stage. Rally proper begins tomorrow. Heat one back here in the Cowan Forest, but not before the ceremonial start in the heart of Canberra. Ross Duncan, a stone throw away from Lake Burley Griffin. Great atmosphere here at the ceremonial start. It certainly is a container city, isn't it? <laughs> there it is. Rally cars mixed in. This morning, of course, spectacular action from our power stage. There certainly was. And, of course, Richie Dalton was the man. He was flying. There's got to be a lot of damage under his car. They're repairing it, but they're attaching a set of wings for tomorrow's oh, jump. Yeah. Yeah. We're heading back to the same area. Yep. That, that uh, Cowan stage is in there. 
can be tough on cars. Well, we've driven over it, of course, and over there, it's a very hard surface with rocks protruding from the road. There's going to be a lot of damage done to motor cars tomorrow. Now, if you get through that and lock away a result, we head today to the west side of the city. Complete contrast, very tricky for tyre selection and also grip out there. Uh, but they, they are the best stages, like... We're in the, in the pine forest and it's tight and twisty, very, very technical, and as you said, tyre wear is going to be a big issue. And being round two, they need those points. Roscoe's going to be a great weekend of rallying. Indeed it will, Dean, and we'll catch all that action right after the break. Don't go away. Welcome back to the second round of the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship, coming to you from the National Capital Rally in Canberra. Simon Evans might have made the final of the Armour All STP Power Stage yesterday, but it wasn't without its dramas. Yeah, obviously we had the, the problem with the, the dogs in the gearbox, so uh, we rang Hollinger yesterday morning and uh, he machined up some parts for us. and. One of the boys from uh, Steve McKenzie's team was flying up last night, so he picked up the parts and delivered them to us at 8.30, and then the boys uh, rebuilt our, both our gearboxes, because when we pulled apart our spare, it was worse than the, the gearbox that was in the car. For his brother Eli, the power stage was a dream start. Yeah, look, uh, it was nice to qualify for the power stage, and then to win it's an absolute bonus. We got five points there for the championship, so... Really excited. We had a good setup for that that surface, and stage one now is actually a repeat of the power stage, plus a little bit more. So I'm hoping to be just as fast on the first stage. Yeah, I couldn't believe the time that he pulled out of that. Like we matched his time, I think, uh, from this qualifying run. I thought, oh, this could be a bit close, but yeah, they pulled that extra three seconds out. I was like, wow, like full credit to him. Um, he's a, definitely a talent. So yeah, look to see what the car can actually be capable to do is, is fantastic for me. Adrian Coppen is wearing two hats this weekend: one behind the wheel, and the other helping behind the scenes of his car club's event. It's always good to uh, do your home rally, you know, family and friends can come out to support you and, uh, you know, it's my car club that puts it on and I'm the president of that, so it's always good to see and hopefully it's a success for everyone and they all enjoy it. Settlement One is a longer version of yesterday's power stage. Eli Evans is first outright car on the road. His time of 2 minutes 46.5 seconds over the 4.38 kilometres is not fastest and he knows it. Missed a couple of turn turn ins, missed the apexes and got a bit out of rhythm. So hopefully we don't lose too much time to the others. Simon, on the other hand, is upbeat. The repaired gearbox is holding firm, but there's still some concerns. So we found a small problem there. We know what the problem is. Yeah. We should get the whole event out of it, okay. but we're going to have to change something. Okay. So you, you are you worried about it in the back of your mind for today or tomorrow at all, or it feels solid and you're driving it flat out? Mate, I'm too dumb to worry about stuff like that, so <laughs> I'm just driving it. Can you get someone down here, please? Sorry. Tony Sullins is balked on the line. Officials struggling with clocks and their start time is delayed. Still, they equal the Evan Citroen. We had a bit of a stuff up at the start. They got us on the wrong minute and all that sort of stuff, so it was a bit of a stress we had 30 seconds to go, so the adrenaline was pumping and we just had a go. Molly Taylor and Bill Hayes bring the high-tech oils Renault home in sixth, but only two seconds slower than the fastest car. Our stuff was great, actually. We, we made a few changes in testing, and I think really when we get out to these more twisty technical stages, we'll, we'll see if that worked or not. <laughs> Steve McKenzie beats Taylor by 0.1 of a second. Next stage is 30k one, and that's where someone's going to have a real crack and pull the day, I'm sure, so... Is that uh, going to be you? Uh, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> The first few k's of Wamboyne River are good for Eli Evans, but the 1600cc engine is seriously reduced in power. Died. He and Glenn Weston no. stop and restart the car in the hope they can reset the electronics and with it eliminate the horsepower drop, but it doesn't work. Short left six line. Any other suggestions? Then bump, no. It's blown a turbo pipe off. The Citroen is seriously reduced in power. Eli is concerned his dust will affect the next car on the road. His brother, Simon. Fortunately, the onboard rally safe system has a built in alert for cars needing to overtake. But it never goes off. Evans Senior, meantime, is catching the Citroen's dust and he begins to lose time. The distraction of the dust also means distraction from the task of driving and he hits a jump hard. 
By the time Eli nears the finish, Simon has been struggling to get past his younger brother and the temperature inside the Honda Jazz cabin is rising fast. What are you doing? At 12 years his junior, Eli Evans is discovering the downside to an angry older brother. Somewhat later in life than most, but he remains calm. Just speak calmly, all right? The only winner in this battle is Molly Taylor, taking the stage by eight seconds from Tony Sullins, who is given a derived time after stopping for an incident. Steve McKenzie's time is 10 seconds behind the lead effort of Taylor. Not bad considering his stall on the start. Combine that with a couple of overshoots and he and Brent would have been close to a stage win. Adrian Coppen has a lucky break. He had already slowed for a suspected flat tyre when the yellow caution was given, downgrading the stage. He too receives a derived time. With the hose back on the Citroen's turbo and his fuming brother simmering down, Eli Evans blasts through the final morning stage. Titan's five late over crest, tidy it up. Simon is only 2.4 seconds behind, but the hard landing in the previous stage has broken a gearbox mount. Neither Evans' brother will affect the end result. Molly Taylor is third in stage, but holds a 13 second lead over Tony Sullins. Sullins is neat and tidy, only fifth quickest, but drops another five seconds to Taylor. In only his third ever rally, Harry Bates had been fifth quickest through the previous stage and is still seventh with the competition back on their game. He beats Ashley James home, who is using the event to set up his new VW Polo. In the four-wheel drive national series, the big news was Justin Dowell and Mark Pedder, both fronting with the new generation four-wheel drives. Pedder's start was short-lived. The race engine for the Peugeot Maxi was only fitted 24 hours ago, and there was no time to dial in the computer. Still doing the same thing, mate, so still cutting out. Starter motor died on the way out here, so we'll head back to service and download and see what the boys can find. No such problems for Justin Dowell and the Hyundai i20 Proto, but he trailed Richie Dalton after the opening stage. SS2 was the game changer though for the fastest man on the road. After a great start, Dalton and John Allen had the chip shop Evo 9 on its lid two thirds of the way through the 27K stage. SOS. Tony Sullins was next on scene. It was a two left, it's a narrow second gear corner, so I just turned in too early to compensate for the back stepping out and just clipped inside of the bend, put it on its side, on its roof, and as you can see, that's the end result. Mick Patton won the stage in the Repco entry by nearly half a second a K from Justin Dow's Hyundai, with Marcus Walkham right in touch with the derived time in the Evo 9. The afternoon stages repeat the three morning stages after lunch and service back in Canberra. All that action coming your way right after the break. Welcome back to the National Capital Rally, coming to you from Canberra in the ACT. The boil over between Simon and Eli Evans has simmered down back in service. I was pretty frustrated though. I'll let him know at the end of the stage. <laughs> it's unfortunate. Um, you know, I don't like to drag my brother down, but that's what's happened today, and he was a bit, he was a bit angry. Meantime, Miss Molly has been keeping her head down and delivering for the High Tech Oils Renault team, but she too has engine issues. We still managed to crack the sump, um, so the boys are out. Like, just uh, be careful, fast, but careful, I guess, in the next loop. Steve McKenzie's morning hasn't been all bad either, and the Opticode Fiesta stays in touch through the lunch service. A couple of little mistakes in the second stage there, so if we didn't have them, we would have been right on Molly's pace. Um, so, yeah, really happy with how it's all going. And seeing a few of the other guys parked, still parked in the service area just then, um, I think we might be pulling a bit of time back, so, um, yeah, we'll keep doing what we're doing. Pulling time in service is exactly what he's doing. Molly Taylor is seven minutes late replacing the sump, and that costs. Seven minutes, unfortunately. Okay. So, uh, uh, 35 seconds, so we'll have a crack. 
They arrived in service with a 13 second lead and before they even start SS4, they've dropped four places outright, handing the heat lead to Tony Sullins with Steve McKenzie just four seconds behind him. The short settlement stage is won by Eli with Simon 0.7 behind. Adrian Coppen and Aaron Kelly have a great run, finishing just one second behind the older Evans. 70 steep downhill dip. Into SS5, Womboyne, Eli right. Evans leads the way, Double eager caution, to drag back his 90 second like deficit. Oh. 70. Oh. What was that? Don't know. We're out, man. Simon Evans races past. Just what the gesture means is anyone's guess. A flat tyre in the last two kilometres of the 27k stage doesn't stop him winning by 11 seconds. But the gearbox mount replaced in service has broken again. Rally leader Tony Sullins hits the same rock as Eli. But continues on. Thanks to the stage being downgraded first pass, he's unsure of the road ahead at speed. He drops time to McKenzie, who finishes behind Simon Evans. Both manage to miss the rock that the two Citroens hit. Yeah, we had a bit of a crack. I thought there were, we had a flat or something towards the end, uh, so I did back off a little bit. The third Citroen hits the same rock. And while Coppen does continue, the impact has pushed the drive shaft into the gearbox and damaged the diff. We'll be in salvage mode just to get to the overnight service. There's always something at every rally that leaves its mark, and today it's hidden in the dust. Ashley James is also caught by the rogue rock, neatly positioned on the racing line. Ooh. Not looking good. No, it's not looking real good at all. The McKenzie brothers lead the rally by eight seconds from Sullins as they enter the final stage of the heat. Molly Taylor is once again fast and consistent, lifting to third outright. We got a puncture in that stage before, and so we, um, we got a little bit of time on Tony, but you know, we can find, got to find 14 seconds to get into third, so we'll uh, just do, try and do a good stage and see what happens. What happens won't affect the heat lead, but the second Evans is also out when the broken mount forces the fan through the radiator. And the car just started overheating and uh, so we slowed down and we were just at a sort of coasting pace to try to get the temperature down and then um, it just stopped, ran out of compression, so <laughs> wouldn't restart and here we stop. The championship chances of the battling brothers might just have been evened up. Things are happening everywhere. Leader Steve McKenzie hits a bump and the left shock sticks in the compressed position. The handling of the Fiesta is all over the place. An overshoot seals their fate. And now the fight is on between Molly Taylor and Tony Sullins. Sullins is next on the road and is slowed by McKenzie's dust. Molly Taylor is closing the gap with no one aware of what the outcome will be. Car started just wander on straight. I thought I had a flat, but I reckon something's going in the front front end. Um, then missed the next corner because I was focusing on that. Um, so then we just limped through the rest of the stage. He's had problems because we've caught him. Yeah, and Simon's off. <laughs> so we could be we we could be doing reasonably well. I don't know how Molly went. You know, I had a big job on if we wanted to catch. Tony and uh, Steve, but they've uh, they've been doing a good job too. So I don't think we've done enough, unfortunately. But um, yeah, we had a clean run through there and enjoyed the stage, and that's all we can do now. It's a heat win for Sullins and Julia Barkley. They're first in the Citroen DS3 by just two seconds. Despite the gearbox noises that continued to come from his Citroen, Adrian Coppen pressed on and is rewarded with third in the heat, ahead of Steve McKenzie and Harry Bates, an excellent fifth. Bates Jr's repeat of the morning stages had been smooth and consistent under the guidance of the experienced co-driver John McCarthy. Their aim was to be within a second a kilometer of the main teams and make the finish. Job done for heat one. And the job's done for Simon Evans. With a blown engine, he won't start heat two, but Eli should. Yeah, look, I'm 99% sure the boys will be able to fix it and we'll carry on, there won't be any issues. They're working on it now, get the wheel straight so they can get it down in the service area and have a good look at it. 
Mick Patton continued his form from the morning, winning the short settlement stage. JJ Hatton was next, the rookie relishing the stage he had become quite familiar with, even if the flying finish did catch him out. <laughs> Justin Dow narrowly beat Guy Tyler, 0.3 of a second was the difference, but Tyler was happy his handling issues of the morning were now behind him. Patton's charge was hard through the long 27 kilometre Womboyne stage, perhaps too hard. When every second counts, there's no room for error. And the Repco Mitzi finishes just half a second behind Dowell and Lee in the LG Hyundai i20. The proto prototype might not have the legs of the unrestricted four wheel drives, but its poise and presence through the forest clearly shows where the future lies in competitive rallying. Marcus Walcombe holds on for third in stage, but only just after splitting a turbo hose. Patton grabs back the stage win through the final Hibernian stage, but the top three spots overall remain unchanged to end Heat 1. Patton, Dowell and Walcombe. After the break, it's Heat 2 of the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship. Coming to you from the nation's capital. Back in a moment. Welcome back to the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship from the National Capital Rally in Canberra. Local ARC rookie Reese Pinter works two jobs to feed his passion of rallying. And while he hasn't featured in the top placings, he's stoked with the day's outcome. Everyone sees the end result of rallies, but they don't see, you know, exactly how long it takes just to be here, like full days recce, testing the whole lot. For me, it's just getting to that point, just the passion, just working really hard. And, you know, sometimes it gets hard working two jobs, but as soon as you, you go five, four, three, two, one, you just know exactly why you're doing this. So. While Reese Pinter represents the passionate enthusiast determined to realise his dreams, further up the rally ladder, the dreams just get bigger. Current ARC champ Scott Petter is fulfilling his dream to compete in the WRC. This year, he's driving in selected international rounds in a WRC two car. Dean Herridge caught up with a few of our drivers here this weekend who've tasted the international stage. Dale Moskett is arguably one of Australia's most experienced co-drivers, sat alongside many people in the World Championship. Dale, why do you think Australians are trying to make it overseas? I mean, it's everyone's goal, isn't it? I'm fortunate enough to, to do this for a living, um, and to do that, I guess there's not enough of a sport here that you need to take it overseas uh, to make it a full-time thing. Uh, but that's the aspiration of everyone here. Everyone, you know, as a kid growing up, loving motorsport, wants to compete at the elite level, and uh, it's a fantastic thing to do. But it's a lot of hard work to make it happen. But here's where it starts. Well, just from the whole being on a WRC event over in Europe, uh, the atmosphere is huge. But everything is, you know, very stringent, very timed, um, and just means driving too. You know, you've just got to work with an engineer and all that sort of stuff to really understand the car, and it just get yeah, really created a, a whole new insight to me for rallying. And having the opportunity to see different terrains and, you know, jump into a rally where you haven't done it before and, and try and push from that. Um, I think that's helped us come in here and we haven't, I mean, did the rally six years ago, but so they're effectively new rallies. So taking, I think what we learned from doing that and using it here on the weekend. I helped Molly here when the first year she did the Australian Rally Championship, I was sitting with her and I took Adrian over to Germany last year. And uh, yeah, it's nice to be able to see that next evolution coming on. I'm not finished yet, but it's nice <laughs> to see the, the sort of next crop coming along. Well, it's a brisk day here in the ACT for day two and the start of heat two. What a day it was yesterday. Well, the crews are going to find it completely different here today because they're moving into the forest just west of the city. Now the roads here are hard packed but loose on the top and also they are tight and twisty and very technical. Well today it's going to be make it or break it. As Dunko just indicated it's almost a new rally today and Eli Evans at least is approaching heat two with just that in mind. Um, we've got two sets of suspension. We've got one set up for yesterday and one set up for today so all the struts got pulled out from yesterday and we've got our basically, it's essentially nearly a wet setup we run in these forests out 
on the other side. So mainly because it's so hard packed, it's a bit sandy. So we're going to try and utilise as much as we can get. Yesterday's heat winning co-driver is certainly aware it's a very new day. Yeah, the stages are very, very different today. I mean, they're a lot more technical. Um, a lot more concentration has got to be had, I think. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to expect yet. <laughs> and for the man who had the heat slip away, it's been a long night to find and replace the bent strut. Yeah, there was one guy who had to drive all the way from Bendigo with a shock. <laughs> Uh, so we got it, it got it here at midnight last night, uh, it's in the car now, the boys have done a good job to get it in within the 20 minute service with heaps of time by the looks of it, yeah. so um, yeah we'll be good to go today. It's not good though, with mismatched front suspension, the Optico Fiesta's handling is less than perfect and it shows early. Right. At the 12k mark, he clips the inside of a corner and hits something solid. It's not a puncture, but in fact a second broken strut in as many days. He and Brent head for an early service, hoping to rejoin after lunch. Eli Evans is first on the road and catches everyone napping. His time across the 16 kilometre stage is 12 seconds faster than anyone. Molly Taylor, the best of the rest, with the other Citroens close behind. Adrian Coppen is just two seconds off Molly's pace, the tighter, twistier road suiting his driving style. Tony Sullins and Julia Barkley are right there too, but Harry Bates is plugging away in the background. While no threat to the championship, he's showing definite signs that rallying is in his blood. Less than a second a K behind the main field. There's no chance the others will bleed more time to Eli through Cottage 5. Big crests and brave hearts are needed here, and everyone has finishing high on the priority. Molly Taylor is just two and a half in arrears, and Adrian Coppen has the DS3 Citroen another three behind. Care quest Titans four. Sullins doesn't feature in the top three. He runs wide early. And things don't improve. Lord. Something's wrong with the car now. He and Barkley are losing time, and more importantly, confidence in the car, and the time reflects it. Titans on crest. Harry Bates continues his clean, smooth approach in an almost bog standard two wheel drive Corolla Sportivo. Fourth in stage, and again, only one second a K slower than Eli Evans. SS9 Tidbin Biller is not to Molly's liking. She drops 14 seconds to Eli and is lucky it's only that, as her co-driver will attest to. Go 200. Gas, gas. Oh, nice. Go 200. In slow motion, the size and proximity of that rock was no doubt what was going through Bill Hay's mind. Adrian Coppen consolidates again. With the lead entry, an identical Citroen, it's very clear what these cars are capable of. Second fastest over the 20 kilometer stage, seven shy of Eli Evans, and leapfrogging Molly Taylor to be second in heat. Justin Dowell has softened up the suspension in the LG i20 Proto, and it paid in spades. Seven seconds quicker than Walkham in the opening east-west stage. Although the brothers from Tasmania were quicker than rally leader Mick Patton in the Repco machine. We had a good run through there, yeah, pushed on a bit, so um, yeah, had, having a good morning so far. Walcombe's good form continued, but Patton picked up the pace through Cottage 5 and took the stage by four seconds. Justin Dowell had been relegated to third after a small spin mid-stage, but hung on to the overall lead by three seconds. OK, just tidy up a touch. Guy Tyler was the most consistent of the following four-wheel drives. With a replaced rear diff, the 777 Rally Sport Evo 5 was holding down fourth overall, ahead of JJ Hatton. Dowell spun again in the final morning stage, but raced on to win from Patton by 0.1 of a second. Well done. So the positions heading into the lunch service were Dowell, Patton and Walcombe. Just three stages to go in the second round of the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship. That's coming your way in just a few moments.
back to the National Capital Rally coming to you from Canberra. Tyres play a huge part in rallying and here in the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship we have a control tyre provided by Kumo. But there's not just one size or compound for that matter. Dean Herridge has some tips on what's used where over the weekend. I'm inside the Kumo tyre truck at the service park here. There's a mountain of tyres behind me, so many, and would you believe they're not all the same? We've got compounds to choose from, obviously also sizes. Lots for our teams to think about, you know, the crews, the drivers and the co-drivers to strategise their way through the weekend. Earlier on we heard Dross Duncan talk that this rally of Canberra is almost played out in two parts. The Saturday stage is being in the Cowan Forest, very rough and stony and rocky, really hard on the tyres and the cars for that matter. And then obviously Sunday is going to be in the uh, west side of the city, smoother, sandier based, more technical style of road. So how do you best work your compound and tyre sizes out? Mediums or hards? And obviously then we've also got the sizes, like I said, so a 195 here, you can see on your right, and if I swing it across to a 205 as a choice, you can see it's about half an inch wider. Why would you go for a narrow tyre over a thicker tyre or a wider tyre? You basically can use a narrower tyre to try and bite through the surface for your first passes. Less tyre on the road means you have a bit more feel and grip through the, through the course. On the second pass, when it's swept, you want a wide, wider tyre, giving you maximum grip. The problem is with only 16 for the weekend, how do you manage all those numbers? Is anyone's guess. And if you'd like the chance to take on the world with Kumo Tyre and win a trip to round four of the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship in September, then just head to our website, rally.com.au forward slash promotions for all the details. It went to the wire in the four-wheel drive national series at the National Capital Rally. Justin Dow had started the day with a softer setup and it was working, but it was too for his opposition. This car's really, really good to drive but um, it's just a bit unpredictable with all that tight stuff. There's a lot of real big crusty jumps that can catch you out and, and we've got away with a few moments, but um, in, anyway, we're having fun. We gave up uh, fair too much on stage one. Unfortunately, uh, took a little bit to get going and a bit untidy in there, but um, yeah, clawed it back on stage two and I think we were dead eye dick on stage three. So um, yeah, look, there's still, uh, you know, we made a few adjustments in our notes. We're still just trying to drive the lines that we're trying to achieve and, uh, and push on from there. Really enjoyed the roads this morning, a bit more tight and twisty. Um, so yeah, we hit, unfortunately had an overshoot in that last stage and dropped a bit of time, but um, still right in it, I think. Guy Tyler set out to repeat his good morning performance, but his car had other ideas after the electrics got wet. It handed JJ Hatton his best finish for the heat. Fourth. Dow smashed the field by 16 seconds, a second a K. With a 21 second overall lead and a weekend win in sight, he and Lee pushed hard next stage. Another win, this time by 13 seconds. It comes eight short, straight 50. Caution mid crest, four left narrow. This is the one you went to turn mid crest, mid crest, four left narrow. Patton had this moment. Walken was home by two. Level pegging on stage wins, it all came down to the final stage. If Patton or Dow won this stage, they'd win the weekend. Dow, first on the road, had been looking good, but double flats slowed his progress, and Patton looked a shoe in for the rally win. Well, I'm really gutted for them, they drove really, really well today, but um, yeah, look, we'll, it's, it's the bad and the good, I suppose, unfortunately. And unfortunately, as is often the case in this sport, there's more to the story. While that battle had been going on, Marcus Walken got it together in the final stage, taking 14 seconds out of Patton, and with it, the stage and Heat 2 win. It was a tight tussle for the top three positions, with Guy Tyler and JJ Hatton filling the lower order in the fastest five this weekend. So, Mick Patton leads the four-wheel drive national series ahead of Justin Dowell with Marcus Walkham third. Remember though, it's the best three of five events and Markovic and Tostevin will need to make the trip across the Nullarbor to stay in contention. Coming up, final three stages in the outright championship right after the break.
The ACT is hosting this second round of the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship. Service HQ is right in the heart of Canberra. It's also HQ for our nation's Defence Force and an appropriate place for Adrian Coppin to show his support for our military personnel returning from service overseas. Look, it's really great to have Soldier on on board. Uh, it's, you know, become an ambassador for them in the last few weeks. Um, so it's, you know, it's, I believe it's a really good cause. It's something close to me. Uh, if we can create a bit more awareness for them, that's you know, all a good thing. Coppen is soldiering on himself. His morning performance having elevated him to second behind Eli Evans. Eli sets a time of 11 minutes 53.8 for the nearly 17 kilometres. With a weekend win within his grasp and a good handful of championship points in the bag, he laments the fact he should have been faster. Not over the moon about that. I would have liked to have been a bit faster, but that's all right. We got through, so. Molly Taylor is next, though, five seconds behind Eli. But her challenge today isn't just coming from Tony Sullins. Man, Adrian's on, on form today as well, so we really need to uh, finish ahead of him and, and Tony to be behind Adrian. But, uh, so we're trying to step up the pace a little bit this afternoon and, you know, find that balance in between uh, going hard and not taking risks. So we'll, uh, we'll see if it's good enough. It isn't. Coppen is on fire through the east-west stage. His notes are good and he and Erin Kelly are in sync. He's driving like he believes in himself and it shows on the leaderboard. Yeah, we had a really good push and that car just felt really good to start with. So had a prep and, yeah, it's the first stage win, so... That was part of the goal this year, so we've done that sweet. <laughs> he still trails Evans for the heat, but in rally terms, he's now leading the overall event for the weekend. And that will be of concern to Taylor and Sullins. Steve McKenzie is back in the mix too. After robbing a strut from a Subaru, he's back with even more mismatched suspension that somehow pushes Molly back into fourth in stage. I honestly wasn't um, planning to attack at the moment, but... It sucks you're in that stage a bit. <laughs> so, yeah, no, it was good fun. Sullins is in fourth for the heat, but that's not enough to influence the weekend result. But the bonnet pins on his Citroen are. They've come undone, and that's sure going to have an impact. Yeah, that was a bit of a hairy experience. We probably lost a bit of time there, I'd say. But I think we were quicker than um, stopping and fixing it. The game of positional strategy is falling in favour of Molly Taylor. All she needs to do now is beat Adrian Coppen. And that opportunity comes very next stage. It's missing heaps. What? It's missing. His DS3 Citroen falters five kilometres into the penultimate special stage. He and Erin Kelly limp the stricken car to the end of stage. Coppin's rally and aspirations of a first ever event win are dashed on the side of the road, unable to start the final stage of the event. I got my first ever stage win in East West and went into that one and started okay in about, I don't know, 5k in and started missing and coughing and sputtering and pulled over and reset everything and uh, just got progressively worse and we managed to splutter through and get to the finish. But what's happened, but like we had 18 seconds on Molly and all we had to do was reserve that and finish and oh, I don't know how it all worked, but yeah, I think we would have been on track to probably win the rally, if not second, uh, yeah, I don't know, but yeah, pretty gut-wrenching. Nothing gut-wrenching for Harry Bates though, he claims third place through SS11, again beating Tony Sullins and putting an all-important position between the Citroen driver and Molly Taylor, now in second place outright. Under the rules, two seconds can't beat a first and third in heat. Tony Sullins was first yesterday and must finish in third today to win the rally. But Harry Bates, even though he isn't registered for the championship, can claim third position in the rally, and that's currently standing in Sullins' way. It's exactly what Molly needs, though. The son of the man her mum has co-driven alongside for more than two decades in only his third ever rally must finish in front of Tony Sullins to ensure Molly makes history, becoming the first woman to win a round of the Australian Rally Championship. Steve McKenzie leaves his best till last, third in the final stage, but his late burst of speed won't affect the final result. It's even out of Tony Sullen's hands. He knows he must finish to gain valuable points and hopefully a podium position. 
Up front, Molly Taylor and Bill Hayes continue to press on, conscious the rally is still up for grabs. Today was uh, pushing really hard and yeah, we uh, yeah, had our work cut out for us for sure, but um, it's good, it's good more people having a battle, the better, so it makes it exciting. Ironically, even at the finish line, the result for the weekend is still out of her control. <laughs> no one can predict this weekend at all, it's been what insane. Harry Bates brings the Sportivo home to beat Sullen's time overall by 40 seconds to secure third in heat. In the process, securing a rally win for Molly and the third spot on the podium behind them both. Oh, I'm just so proud of the pair of them, you know, for what they've done. It's, it's quite amazing, but obviously for Harry and his third ever rally, I'm a little stunned, very proud. In heat terms, Eli Evans bounces back from yesterday to win from Molly Taylor, with Harry Bates in third. Tony Sullins might rue the decision not to check his own bonnet clips more frequently, and Reese Pinter grabs a sensational fifth place, finishing when plenty of big guns didn't. Let's get the thoughts of our multiple Australian rally champion on just who he thought was doing the business this round. Molly Taylor may have won the weekend, but my vote goes to Irishman Richie Dalton for winning the power stage with that huge jump. He started the rally, he was on fire, but went off the road on the second stage. For my vote, doing the business was Richie Dalton. The Kumo Tyre Spirit of the Rally Award goes to Rhys Pinter, a passionate and dedicated rally enthusiast who lives and works for his sport. Another first for Molly Taylor, leading the Australian Rally Championship ahead of Eli Evans. Tony Sullins and Adrian Coppen have both had a sniff of success, and let's not underestimate the determination of both Simon Evans and Steve McKenzie come round three. The next stop for the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship Express Train is the International Rally of Queensland, June 20 and 21. For all the details, go to rally.com.au for everything you need to keep up with the great sport of rallying in this country. Until then, I'm Greg Rust. Bye for now. Today's coverage is made possible by Kumo Tire, Pedder Suspension, Armoral, STP, Co Tire, Can Am, Polaris, and our supporting partner, East Coast Bull Bars, world's best alloy bull bars.